Well, my, my daughter Rachel was the first one to be shot and killed in the tragedy at Columbine High School, April 20th, 1999. And that morning I had uh, uh, gone to a store and my cell phone rang at about 11.40 and my wife said that there had been a shooting. A neighbor had run across and told her there had been a shooting at the school. And so I rushed, rushed out, got in my car, started across town, got caught up in a massive traffic jam and turned on the radio and was, I wasn't expecting to hear what I heard. I, I was thinking probably a kid took a gun to school and shot at a teacher or someone he was mad at and wasn't even expecting to hear uh, an announcer sobbing saying that 35 or so kids had been shot and that a number of them had been killed. And immediately I was thinking of my daughter Rachel, my son Craig, who were both students there. My brother had two children there as well. And uh, so I, I started hyperventilating. I mean, I, I started praying and crying and, you know, just uh, felt like I was going to have a heart attack when I heard that news and rushed across town. We waited in an elementary school for hours as busloads of young people came from the school. And they walked, marched them across the stage and they called out their names. And slowly the crowd dwindled down until there was just a handful of people left. And they told us there was one bus left coming from Columbine. And I remember running outside, uh, balancing on a small fence, looking in the bus windows when it pulled up. And when the final students got off the bus, there were still 13 families that had loved ones that were unaccounted for, a teacher and 12 students. That day uh, was the most horrible day of my life. And I think the hard part was not knowing uh, whether Rachel was dead or alive. We, we had heard from my son Craig. We had heard from... Uh, Jeff and Sarah, my nephew and niece. But uh, by midnight that night, we, we assumed that Rachel was one of the ones killed. We called every hospital, and our only hope was that she was unconscious and that perhaps she had been shot and wounded and hid in a closet somewhere that no one had looked in. That was our only hope. And at, at noon the next day, we got the official word that she was the first one to be shot and killed at Columbine. And then my son, Craig, had gone through incredible trauma. He was in the library, and his two close friends who were both on the football team, Craig was on the wrestling team, the three of them were sitting at a table talking in the library, and two boys ran into the room with guns and began to kill students all around Craig. Cassie Bernal was killed 10 feet behind my son. Val Shinor, a young girl that was also asked if she believed in God, was shot, I think, eight times and survived. And... Uh, they came to the table where Craig was at and began to taunt one of my son's best friends who was a, a black student with racial slurs. And they shot and killed Isaiah, they shot Matthew Kector, and Craig was literally covered with the blood of his own friends. And they turned their guns on him and at that point the sprinkler system went off in the library from smoke in the room and it distracted the boys and they never came back to where Craig was at or I would have lost two children that day. One of the things we discovered after Rachel died, <clears throat> I was in her bedroom with my daughter, Bethany, and we were looking at some of Rachel's things. We were talking about her, and I happened to see two pieces of paper caught on the mattress springs under Rachel's bed, and I pulled them out, and it was an essay that she had written for her fifth period class a month before she died, and it was called My Ethics, My Codes of Life. And in that essay, Rachel challenged her reader to start a chain reaction with kindness and compassion and she repeated that several times. But she defined compassion. She gave Webster's definition of compassion, and then she improved on his. She said, here's my definition. And she listed five things that to her uh, meant compassion. And the first thing she listed was forgiveness. And that really struck our family that Rachel put such a high emphasis on forgiveness. And I remember... Uh, Shortly after the tragedy, we were out at Rachel's car, which became a big memorial uh, near, next to the school. There were several memorial sites that were built, and, and around her car, they, they, they put thousands of flowers and books and all these things. And I remember Maria Shriver doing an interview, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, wife, did an interview with us, and she said to me, she said, uh, how do you feel about the boys who did this and, and their parents? And I said, well, our family talked about all this, and we, we made a choice to forgive and to move on and celebrate Rachel's life. And I saw her head just jerk back 
later, after the interview, she came up to me and said, someday I'd like to talk to you more about, about that. She said, I couldn't forgive anyone who had done what they did to your daughter. And I've said then and I say now that I would not have pardoned Eric and Dylan, but I forgave them. My daughter would not have wanted Eric and Dylan to ruin our lives uh, because of unforgiveness. In fact, she was the one that told us to forgive. With our family, as we chose to forgive, my, my son Craig, who was in the library, had the hardest struggle with that issue. And uh, he was very angry, and rightly so. I mean, he had every reason to be angry. His sister was killed. He watched his two close friends kill beside him. He, he, uh, he was terrorized. I mean, I can't imagine what Craig went through facing these two boys looking down the barrel of their guns and came as close as anybody I've ever met to dying. And uh, so he struggled and with that issue. And forgiveness is, is something that sometimes we need to, to do over and over again until it takes, you know, and, until the grace of God is firmly there for us to, to let go. And I'm so glad that Craig has. Craig is truly forgiven and moved ahead with his life and chose to celebrate Rachel's life instead of the anger and the bitterness that we see with so many other people. For me personally, there's no way I could have, in my own strength, forgiven Eric and Dylan. I would have been mad at them for the rest of my life. Uh, but I, I didn't feel anger at first. My, my deepest reaction was just incredible sorrow. I just was so devastated by Rachel's death because I have five children and she was, we called her a spark plug because she was the, the spark plug of our family. And it was like <clears throat> they, they took the light out of our family. I know that people who are not Christians go through tragedies similar to what I've gone through, and I don't, I don't know how I could have gone through all of this and kept my sanity, because we not only lost a daughter, we had uh, a son that we had to deal with for a full year after the tragedy, who had nightmares night after night, would wake up screaming, would relive the tragedy, would go into fits of rage because of, of his emotions would just get the best of him struggle to keep, keep his sanity for a year. I can't imagine what it's like to not, to not be a Christian and go through what we went through. I just can't even imagine it. I was in an interview with a, a national person, a person you see every day on television, I won't name her, but uh, we were doing an interview and, and um, a commercial break came and she leaned over and tapped me on the leg and she said, Mr. Scott, you're a very strong person. And I said, no, I'm not a strong person. I'm a very weak person, and I choose that weakness because I've learned a secret that Rachel learned too, that God's grace is there when we choose to be weak. And so, yes, I'm strong, but it's in the strength of His grace, not in my own strength. This is, to me, so important, is you need to acknowledge that you can't forgive within your own strength. That's the first step of forgiveness. And I, I, have, I had to say that, God, I cannot forgive Eric and Dylan and I confess that weakness, but out of my weakness, your strength is made perfect. And when we choose to be weak, God is strong. Uh, but there's so much that opened up as a result of forgiveness, you know.